World's Finest, Teen Titans issue 4, Mark Wade writing with Emanuela Lupacino on the art. And this issue is primarily like a hangout slash sleepover with three of the boys. There's some other stuff going on, but the, the focus is very much Wally's house with Aqualad and uh, Roy, Speedy. And Speedy's a dick. <laughs> uh, Garth keeps getting picked on. And to the point where Wally's parents are like, hey, that dick Roy is a bad influence. We don't like him very much. <laughs> and Roy overhears this and is very angry that he's been spoken about like this. And especially since Garth is kind of the one understanding one, he's like, nah, you know, he feels very like alienated and like lonely. And this, this is how he this lashes is out. Yeah. Bas instead of being upset that he gets picked on, Garth just analyzes him and nails him to a T. And this obviously does not, uh, cheer Roy up in any way shape or form so uh, yeah I mean I, I've been enjoying this book I think it's actually the better of the two world's finest titles uh, and I like the other one a lot but I think this one feels like it's got I'm, more of a, an overall sense of uh, story to me and character I'm building really, I'm really mixed on that because I think obviously I've been up and down on the main world's finest book I think some points it's fantastic other points it's just okay um if you'd asked me about after the first two issues of this book, I'd have said, yes, it's the better book. These last two felt a little bit more meandering, I suppose. And they're, they're, they're not bad issues by any means. And they're, they're very much, they are doing good character stuff, but I feel like there's not a, a strong story direction for a first arc going on here for me, at least. Ah, the character stuff's why I like it so much, though. Like, I, I think the fact that it takes time to like develop these relationships between all this, all the team members, yeah, you because know, obviously we mainly focus on the three guys here who are hanging out and Roy buying the huge TV because he's used to just using Oliver's money for stuff, uh, and and just all the weird ways Garth is kind of different and doesn't do things normally. But then you've also got the the Mal and um bumblebee stuff uh with their relationship starting to blossom because she gets him like this gift which is actually the, the the guardian shield which when he actually tries to use it later turns into the suit uh yeah. you know so i think i liked how this was bouncing around him there's like one quick scene with robin and uh i think yeah it's donna, oh, it's donna yeah and uh not hawk boy what's his name golden eagle <laughs> yeah ex golden eagle <laughs> X Golden Eagle, sorry, he yeah, scored out, which is a nice touch. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're selling this idea that I, I think, apart from just like dealing with those relationships and like dealing with those dynamics, which I'm really enjoying, sort of like really focusing on, because a lot of this stuff from these characters when they were in this phase of their career was written in like the Silver Age or even like before that in some cases. And it's kind of nice to have a modern comic book sort of tackling some of these relationship dynamics. And I especially like the, even though they're never in the same scene together in this issue, the t discussion of uh, Garth and Donna and how different they are, where Donna has this like desire to like experience and be stimulated by everything because she comes from a place that didn't have all these other things, much like Garth in a lot of ways, but she wants to see movies and concerts. She wants to go to demolition derbies, which is apparently what she did in this issue and wrecked a car and won a trophy. Uh, she wants to get all the noise, whereas Garth is like, like, he hates it. He hates the noise. He hates the, the crowds. He hates loud music and TVs and all of the stimuli. He's used to things being tranquil and serene and just peaceful in a way that's different. And I wouldn't say I ever cared about their relationship before, but I thought talking about how different they are here did a lot for both of them as characters, even if I, you know, I don't really care if they get together or stay together or, or what necessarily, but I thought this was an interesting way of just sort of tackling how two different people who both come from different civilizations that are separate from the regular world are both having very, very, very different reactions to it and what parts of those things appeal to them. Um, so I, I thought that was really good stuff. Yeah, I I, say, I I agree. I like all the the characters that's going on here. Um, I said that that stuff uh, in particular is really strong. Even even Roy has like a really like strong point about the two of them, right? When when mm. when when this all comes out, you know, and Garth kind of says all oh, this. I think it's where they're all outside, and Roy is like kind of sticks up for Garth, like no no no, you be you, and I feel like. 
th- that's like the most genuine Roy was in the entire issue, and it kind of got brushed over by everyone else. Like it didn't acknowledge that he that he was quite genuine there. I think it's because the others, particularly Wally, I think misreads the advice a little bit. I think he reads the advice from Roy as, you know, just just be you, uh, even at the expense of everyone else, because that's how that's how Roy is, right? <laughs> he shoves who he is in front of everyone constantly, and he's doing it to make up for like what he's missing and what he's lacking. So the, the advice is kind of tainted in a way, but even though it actually is good advice, like if you if you just pay attention to like the the core part of it which is yeah just be yourself like that that part's good like yeah you know don't worry about you being you but yeah it comes from this place where he like almost is too much of that and that's kind of what comes up uh you know between the other characters later when they're talking about roy and it is yeah so i i, I like that I, I think it's a it's, it's just a little bit nuanced i appreciate all the character building obviously it's not an issue where a lot of the action happens you know robin's talking about you know looking into this stuff that toy man's been up to or Toy Boy, and you know, then there's this attack on uh, Bumblebee and that at the end of the issue, which is you know, kind of the action leading into what we're going to be doing next. Uh, yeah, but I I appreciate that, and I I think it taking time, especially you know, this is issue what three, four, four, oh. and I think you know, if, let's say we're in the middle of a six issue arc, this feels at the right time for this sort of part of the story where we slow down and we have all the characters kind of. Think- the problem is for me, especially as I read these issues back to back, issue three was basically that as well. Yeah, true. true. It, like that's that's like I said, oh, it's it's. I'm a little less hot on this book after this issue than I was after issue two. Because if it was just like a one issue like this, in the middle of an arc, yeah, sure, I I, I get that. But it feels like it's really slowed down because issue three was just oh they were they were all at the uh, they were the the fan convention. And a lot of that was just you know the the characters them kind of just reacting to each other as well. The, and yeah, that's why it feels a little bit like it's it's lacking some momentum right now for me. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what they what they do with the ongoing threat as the next issue or two kind of kind of progress. Um, I, I think I I'm just appreciating that it is taking this time to actually develop the entire team. Like we're actually getting something with all the characters and how they all interact with each other. We've not had yeah. every pairing yet, for sure, but uh, all all the ones we've had have been have been quite interesting, and I I, I, mean, I appreciate that. I think it's a good little character book for the entire team, which is which is cool. And I, I don't doubt that there's going to be some fun, you know, villains for them to fight, you know, down the line, uh, if not very next issue. So uh, uh, yeah, next issue looks like it. It yeah. should be pretty action orientated, based off of the cliffhanger of this. But I mean, d- yeah. you could also just do that in three pages, and that could be it for all we know. Uh, very possibly, it is worth mentioning. Mal doesn't want to be a superhero. He sort of like sort of declines it, but she's like, "No, nah, just keep the the shield just in case." But if you ever do decide to change your mind, hit the button on the back, and of course, immediately they're in an action scene, and he's like, "Shit!" Like, there's people in danger. Of course, I'm going to do it. Of course, I'm going to yeah. be the reluctant hero. So. Uh, he becomes guardian because apparently he's a newsboy legion uh, nerd. That's why. Yeah, that's yeah. why she gave him that. There must be dozens of those. I mean, it's basically Matt. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's basically Matt. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, we should probably mention that the villain here, uh, this this red character, to to I don't even remember who that says. Uh, they're doing this, they're, they're trying to kill a titan to be initiated into a supervillain team, and I do think it's interesting that they maybe came after Bumblebee thinking, oh, Bumblebee will be the easiest one, because it's Bumblebee, but obviously underestimating her, and also underestimating the fact that there's a second character here with a yeah, fancy Yeah, he's throwing a guardian, yeah. So, well, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Uh, but no, I'm digging it. I, I don't have as much of a problem right now, because I'm just so into the character stuff, but I, I can, you know, eventually, yeah, it does have to like ramp up and give us the uh, the momentum, like you say, as well. Uh, but for now, I'm kind of enjoying it as like a teen, like almost like an Archie book, <laughs> I guess, in a way. It definitely has that vibe to it, yeah. Yeah, and didn't Mark Wade write Archie at one point? He did, yeah, he did, yeah. So I, I'm kind of down for that. Uh, what are you rating World's Finest Teen Titans issue four? Um. I'm gonna give it a six point five. It's it's all right. It's not mm. quite good for me. Like I think it's compounded a little bit. 
by of having issue three be a similar vibe as well, like, and, and this lacking the momentum. Okay. It's not all just this issue. And, and I have not really mentioned it, but I'll just mention as I'm doing my rating here, the art by Lupacino. Oh, uh, it's still great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very pleasing, and I think the fact that it is very much the teen drama focus so far is helped by the fact that Lupacino is very good with the expressions. Very Like, we have, you know, Roy's uh wally and garth or they're not in costume this issue they're all wearing t-shirts and stuff uh wally he's got the ginger hair so he sticks out quite quickly but and roy's still got his baseball cap yeah so there's a simple things but i, I do think lupacino does a good job with all their mannerisms and the way they're kind of you know bouncing off of each other um you know little things like wally being annoyed when speedy's a dick so he super speeds and like makes his dart miss the board or at least gets a little scoring shot uh yeah. and he's like ah that can't make sense i'm i'm red arrow or i'm speedy like i should yeah be so, this. something as well i am um, uh, belair's colors i really like the the subtle shift where all the stuff out of costume with the with the guys it's like these really flat colors um not in a bad way, but like they are flat. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you go to the stuff in costume, uh, like even if you just look at the the page of uh, Robin and Donna, uh, that that first page, they're so much more vibrant. Like e even the same colors, like the the reds and the oranges and the yellows, mm. they're just brighter uh, and they stand out so much more when they're in costume. More shading uh, as well, nice I would say page. as well. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I, I, honestly, for, for me, it's a solid date. Uh, I, I, I'm really enjoying the book. Mm -hmm.